The house was in Mayor Square at the corner. It's now Garvey's. That's where we grew up. And, and we played in the streets. Uh, like the traffic wasn't wasn't hectic at the time, you know, but we did, and across the road. So I played, the, uh, there was a wall there, Fox's Bar. I was forever hitting up against that, kicking it up and catching it. And it was, or, I was hurling there. And and then we used to play up in the Maggie's Field. That was the Magdalen, the Magdalen Laundry. They had fields across, across the road uh, from them. And we used to play up there. So I suppose, uh, and then, uh, when, when it became organised, we might have played in the plots, which was down in Wood Key. It's still there, that small little pitch. Or, or we'd have played up in, up uh, where now the university is, it was belonged to the Patrician Brothers at the time. So they had two fields there. Uh, where I went to school, I went to the Old Mon, and which was in Lumber Street, and which is now a car park. And then I went to St. Pat's before I went to St. Mary's. When I was young, there was three players, three players that I idolised. One was Sean Purcell, Frank Stockwell, and Peggy McCarthy from Leitrim. And those three, because, because of the way that they played, the style that they had, everything about them. But that's why I, I was all about Sean Purcell or Frank Stockwell. Every time I kicked the ball up against that wall, I was one of those. And every time I caught it, I was one of them. And I was, that, that was my ambition, just to be. And, and you see, uh, I like, going back to our own time, the dogs, when the dogs were on, up the up and up the road, I, I'm thrifting now. But when the dogs were on, and then sometimes Sean Purcell would come in after the dogs, way, and they would go into the the snug inside there. They used to come in and, and they come in through. We had a sweet shop as well, so they come in through the sweet shop way and into the snug, so they weren't actually coming into the bar. But all I ever wanted to do was to bring in the drink. Bring it into them, you know, yeah, just to see, just to, to, just to put eyes on him, to see him, and to be in his presence, you know, like, and I suppose, you know, we don't realise like that. A lot of young fellas, that's what they see, and that's what they, what they dream of as well. And we have to give them, we have to give them sort of uh, these icon of players, really, you know, to, so that they can look up to, you know. When uh, Sean spoke. Uh, oh, it was, you know, you were just, uh, uh, you go to bed that night and, uh, uh, very happy. And the, the other thing about it, like when we were in uh, fourth class in, in St. Pat's, and Sean was actually, he did his dip in Galway, and he came in one Saturday morning, and we were asked, our class was asked to come in, and he taught us in, inside. And uh, afterwards, then he gave he gave one of the, one of the lads that was in the front seat. He gave him ten shilling note, which was a lot of money then, like for <laughs> uh, to go and buy ice cream for the class. And ah, uh, this was something else, you know. So like the uh, memories of Sean, I have lots of memories then of him later, later on when I really got to know him uh, when I was a player, and he was manager as well. So yeah, I was. It was super, yeah. Football then, well, I suppose really football started in Galway, in my recollection of it anyway, was when Galway won in 56. So they decided uh, that they start the City Leagues. And it was amazing, before that, there, were, there wasn't really football, there was soccer and there was hurling, but there wasn't really a, a lot of Gaelic football, not at underage anyway. But like in national school, all we played was hurling. Like out of that then we sort of, we developed into St. Augustine's, which was a minor team. And they, they were run by people that were running Father Griffins and Lee Mellows. So it was a joint thing there. And I suppose the first competition was under 14 and then you were talking about really after that minor. But we, we, started, we were very successful. We won all, all the way along, you know. And so we actually won more 
hurling titles than we did football ones, you know, which was an amazing thing. But the, the, the sad thing was that of the team that, that I was with in the Gustafs and we won these minor titles and that, that a lot of them never continued. You know, they, they sort of, well, they, they almost had, a, had it all and that was, that was enough for them, you know. But that was football uh, then in, in the city. I suppose when I went to St. Mary's, again, it was a hurling college, but there was football and we did play football, but we could never beat Gerrits because we just didn't have the numbers. We didn't have enough of footballers uh, to, to beat, beat them at that time, even though we ran them very close a lot of times. But anyway, that was, that's history. You know, you can't go back on that. How we got picked for minors or anything, I just couldn't tell you. But uh, I know that we just were there, <laughs> and that was it. So there, were, uh, uh, there wasn't any, any great organising of training or anything like that. That doesn't happen like, like today, you know. It was just, well, you were, you were with, you, or you were seen in a club game or whatever, and that was, that was enough, you know. I, I played, uh, uh, I played, well, played minor, and uh, I, uh, we played minor the day of the crossbar, the crossbar breaking. Galway, Galway playing Roscommon. And uh, Galway were, were uh, winning that game until the crossbar, Aidan Brady broke the crossbar. He swung off it and the crossbar broke. Now I can imagine how difficult it was to get a replacement crossbar and get it up there. So, but that was the day we, were, we played my own there in the final that day and they beat us. And, uh, but th that, was, that was minor. But after that then, I played junior, I played under 21, and then played senior, you know? So it was a sort of a progression like that. We played junior, uh, and I was asked to come into the senior panels. That was in, in uh, 64. Brought in, and then all of a sudden I had, I was playing with the under 21s as well, and I damaged ligaments in my, my ankle and I, re I went back and played again and re-damaged them. So then I was put in plaster, so I lost out on that then. No, I, I wouldn't have got on the panel, I, I, I wouldn't think at that stage, but they had asked me to come in. But by the end of the year, I was called in, in 65, the end of the year. You know, when they're playing some of these uh, challenge games. And, uh, they had different cattle cups and all this sort of thing. So I, I was called in for, for that and, and, and that was the start of it. We used to train maybe twice a week. And uh, now it wouldn't, you, you know, it wasn't, it, it was always a game. So you played a game and then there was training afterwards. And that was the, the sort of the format of it. There was, when we're talking about coaching, there was nothing like there wasn't any, you know, Players just uh, were instinctively good, that, the, the lads and that, so they knew really what to do themselves. Uh, but the, the, the training after would be all sort of running, sprinting, a lot of sprinting, particularly when it came into championship time, it was mainly sprinting stuff. Uh, but uh, the, a lot of the lads, you know, so many of those lads were really ambitious and they were very determined. So they'd be training other times themselves. It wasn't just there. And, and you'd always go for kickabout and everything at other times, you know, so that you, you see, I suppose the skills were important. If you weren't able to win your own ball, if you weren't able to catch the ball, you hadn't much chance, really. So you couldn't be watching for some to drop it and hope that you'd pick up the, the, the crumbs. But, but uh, so you had to work on, on, on skills. And uh, I suppose it's one of the things that maybe we're not doing enough of now. You know, are all the skills, like the, the, there are certain skills that are over abused, but <laughs> we won't go down that road. And uh, no, there was no, no difficulty about, about going in. The only difficulty was when, when training was over to try and get in fast to get the sandwich. <laughs> Your only chance, <laughs> if you were, because for certain fellas, uh, it, it was kept for, you know, it didn't matter how late they were, but, you know, uh, us young fellas had to get in fairly quickly to, to get anything. We trained always in June, 
the only time uh, and, and Stockel would, would well, Frank Stockel would do all the, the training, all the sprinting, but the only time when we, um, when we came back at, after in 67, we, we had been in America and we came back from America and then we went straight over to London to play in the, the Wembley Games. And we came back from that then and there was a very short period of, I think it was two weeks before we played Mayo. And we trained in, in Pure Stadium. And for the first time, uh, John, John Dunn himself took the training. And by God, it was tough. And really, I suppose, in hindsight, very easy to, in hindsight, but in hindsight, we'd have been better off to take a complete rest. Because, uh, you know, between going to the States and everything that involved, and then going to, to London and all that involved, and back and then into this heavy training just before we played Mayo. So I, I suppose that was the, our, a low point. Mayo won and they thought they had, they thought they had three all Irelands ahead of them. But, you know, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, it, it was always a dream, of course, to play for Galway. And, and uh, uh, you, you know, when, when you're there initially, in the first years, you're very, you're, you're looking up to the rest and you're sort of uh, just hoping that you'll fit, fit in. Uh, but as, as I progress, then you become more of a sort of a, a leader then as well in it. And, and particularly sort of when it came into the 70s, I was, I was uh, actually I was training the team and, and playing, which wasn't the, the, the best situation, but you know, it, it, it was uh, just the way it was. Uh, because what I was finding that I was doing more training than I actually needed myself at times, you know. But anyway, that, but uh, the, I suppose what was great about it, uh, playing for Galway, like, like with any team, is that the camaraderie and the friendships and, and like when we were going to train, it was great. You weren't going to train thinking, oh Jesus, they're going to be awful tough this evening. No, you were going, it was to meet all the others and the bit of crack and the banter and everything else. And that's what it was. And, and it, it, it was, it, it was uh, great, you know, I, I have to say, uh, it was, all those days were so enjoyable, I can't, can't remember, it's like, like, I suppose it's a little bit like when you look back when you're youth and you say, summers were always sunny, there were never, <laughs> never any rain, and it's the same when you look back at things like that, think of all of the, you think of the good ones and everything else, and you forget about anything that was unsavoury or whatever in it. Oh. I think I was playing left half forward. Isn't it terrible, I can't. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that, 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 was, that, that was the first round and we, we beat those. And then it was the final, it was against Mayo. And uh, I was corner forward for that game. And uh, I, I don't know whether I touched the ball too often there, and I was wondering why I, wasn't, why I was still on there. But, but I happened to get the last one. Uh, you know, so uh, Jimmy got the, Jimmy Duggan, who was playing his first game that day. He got this ball, and he, he just threw it into me, and all I do was put it over the bar, and that was the winning point. Now it was fortunate, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's like it's like a lot of things, you know. You you, you live on that. The fame of that lasted a good while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, uh, and uh, then like we, uh, we played. We played uh, Cork in the, in the, the semi-final, and uh, yeah, that was that was uh, we were in white for that because of the we had to wear the kind of kind of colours, and uh, yeah, that went well th that day. I remember inside uh, inside in the dressing room beforehand, and you know, fellas are nervous, they don't like to be disturbed, they don't like to, some fellas have a set place that they want to sit in and all of that. And uh, there, there was a photograph had to be taken and this, and it was a changing of jerseys and all of this, you see, so uh, Don wasn't at all happy. And some fella from Crow Park came in and he says, uh, John Dunn said to him, he says, uh, uh, I have to talk to my players, he says. He 
says, we, we can't have this. I, I, I've taught my players. And the fellow says, I sure your, your players know it all already. Well, he turned to me and said, you mind your business, he says, and I mind mine. You know, I'd say there was a few more choice words in there, but, <laughs> but you know, that was the drift, the drift of it. And uh, so, you know, because he, he could sense that players were uneasy about having to wear it, so it didn't happen. And uh, as a result then for the final, you know, when they put on, they used to always have the photograph on the, on the Sunday papers, the day of the final, we were all in the white, you know, so, uh, which, was, uh, uh, which was unusual, you know, but that's what they wanted, they wanted this other photograph. So anyway, that, that, was, the, that was the final thing, so we, we, we beat me, and that's, that's it. That, um, the game itself, uh, I suppose, I, I was playing corner forward. I, it was never a favourite spot of mine. There's no doubt about it, of all places. But uh, at one stage I was moved out to the right half forward. Cyril, Cyril got a, a knock and he had moved in. So we had just switched. And in that time that I was out there, we got the goal and I got a point. The ball going, Noel in Summer doesn't let it go over the sideline. He gets it and sends it up on the right wing. Shiller down. Jack Quinn comes out, tackles him. Uh, but the referee waves all the fingers. Cross around the goal. It's a goal. Every aspect of a game, you know. But anyway, so what made us good, I think, was that the, there was fierce determination amongst so many of the players and a real will to win. They wanted to be the best. And uh, it, uh, coupled with that was that, that they wanted, they were going to put in the work. And they just were skillful. So many skillful players that had come up through from the minor stage, you know, had come through uh, winning all the way along. Like, you know, so uh, winning certainly breeds success. There's no doubt. Last year was uh, the end of uh, 77, going into 78, and I had a, a bad, a very bad break on the nose and it put me out of action for six months. And at that stage, you know, they, they asked me to come back and uh, I just couldn't because family and they uh, were used to me now at home and they says, no, this is it now, Rosalind was saying that. You've had enough. So, because she had seen enough, she had seen enough of me in hospital with bad breaks and so forth. So, um, they came back and they came back the following year again as well, then after that. But uh, no, once I had quit. And uh, that, strangely enough, that, that, that year was the, the year that, that I was still playing with Father Griffins. And that was the year that Tony Regan actually started to play with Griffins. So he joined Griffins and he played, played with them. And uh, we, like, we were good pals then, and we're, uh, you know, uh, all the way along. So, uh, so then uh, we, we were talking, we decided that like Salt Hill was developing, a lot of the young players were coming through and, and so forth. And, and we said, look at, you know, whatever we've left, could we throw in our lot and maybe give them that extra little bit of experience. End of the year then we decided so we, we, we'd transfer. Now it was a massive thing for for me to actually transfer because I had only played all my life with, with, with the, the club and I had been involved in everything, training, every sort of thing with the club. But, but uh, so uh, I remember when, when the transfers were going through and Tony was very anxious, he says, you know, he was afraid that I would pull out at the end and leave him, just the one leaving. But anyway, both of us, both of us left. And it caused a, a fair bit of rancor for a while, you know, but, but nothing nothing bad and I remember uh, just uh, the first time when we went with the, with the seniors which they weren't senior at the time they were intermediate and we had a challenge game 
and the challenge game was uh, up in Fahis Field, which is now uh, which is now soccer at the, the Murphy United. But that we were playing we played Carroll, and uh, we were we were the last out. Tony, myself, and the others were the, were all out ahead, and we're down the far end of the of the pitch. And I came out and I, I, I looked down and I said, Tony, I said, oh, we have an awful lot of work to do, I said, because down at the far end, there was one fella taking corners and they were trying to head goals. So I said, some, some chance, but, but uh, you know, uh, it, it turned around and uh, we, we, um, we went senior then in 83 after winning the, the intermediate. But um, the, the club evolved around the prairie. So most of the players came from within a, a stone's throw, effectively, of the prairie. And it was, not Nakara was just developing, but there were very few players from not Nakara at, at that time. So, you know, size isn't everything really. It's it's the, the sort of the commitment and what players are prepared to put into it, into it, uh, what makes it. And and I suppose as well, like what was very strong at that time was the the friendships of the players because they all knew each other. They were all uh, at the same schools mainly, and uh, so that 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 developed uh, as a result. It uh, is uh, it brought along the club and. Uh, uh, Coupled with that were the, the street leagues. I, I can't say enough about the street leagues, that, that they were, uh, th that's where players got the taste of it. That's where players got the feel and the love for it, you know? And uh, like, you know, and we were making decisions on players that were only 12 <laughs> years of age. <laughs> it was madness, you know? But, uh, I think it was a, a, an exciting time. There is no doubt about it. It, it was a, a wonderful time. There was great excitement, and the, the, like the, the, that was generated very much. You, you see, it's very much generated by the, the street leagues. Like when you were talking about the, the teams, the under 14s and the, and the under 16s and so forth, they, they were smaller groups. Small, you were, but the, the street leagues catered for everyone. And it was, you know, from Highfield to Devon to to sort uh, to Ardnamara, you know, to Glenard to Nantucket, all these areas like there were, and and the, the, like we played out in the grass field uh, at the cross, or we played we played down in Devon, and Devon that tiny little like it was much smaller than it is now. It was a tiny pitch, and and uh, and. Uh, like the prairie itself at that time, uh, it wasn't fenced in, there was nothing, it was only a tiny pitch and it was very much boggy. And you had over at one corner there, there was, there was always a, a bit of a stream there and, and the stream ran down one side of the pitch. And uh, like, you know, you just went over there. Uh, when all my, my family, when they were growing up, that's where they spent their time. On the, in the prairie, playing different games, and uh, you know that's uh, because it was very close. But they, then, with, uh, when it was developed, and, and you have to say it like the the, the likes of the Tom Leonard's, uh, you know, oh, we, we were blessed to have have someone like that that had the, the the foresight to see, and and the ability, and the craftiness. <laughs> actually get all these things done, you know. Uh, so, uh, as a result, like, uh, we, we grew up. I remember when we raffled the house, and uh, we went around door to door, uh, selling, selling these, and there were a hundred, hundred pounds a ticket. A lot, a lot of money at that time. And yet, I don't ever remember being at a house where I was the, the goodwill that was there because they could see the work that was being done, the, the coaching that was being done, whether it was on a Saturday morning, there was something for any, any young kid, 
and then there was all this other activity that was happening at different times of the year, which, which was wonderful there. Yeah. What I used to love, like when I when I finished the school and come home and then go to the prairie uh, between one team or another team, but it was, uh, uh, and I, I think that when I can always remember Alan's team, and I can remember your team very much past as well, but I can remember Alan's team when we were training and I'd have a, a sort of competitions, fielding competitions, first to, to catch, so there were maybe 20 yards apart and they had to kick high and the first group they had to get to 20 or what, these sort of things. And you could see the skill level improving and like, you know, even to this day, like Alan was a great fielder of the ball. You know, now I am not taking credit for it. He brought that on himself, but it was all the practice that he did with it. And lots of those fellas, like the, the, that's what their handling was excellent, and therefore their their skill work was coming along. You know, and like going back to yourself, Pat, when when uh, when we won the bicycles. And that was, uh, that, I thought that was a significant one for us because it showed that at a, at a certain age we could beat anyone, you know. And, and uh, it, it was those sort of things that gave, gave the club the goal. But when we won the bikes, and of course the bikes were, were it was a, a marvellous prize for, for any young fella to win a bike. Like there was always something, you know, there was always something. And there was always something to happen in the prairie. And I, I spent, like, I, it was a second home for me. But then it was easy for me because I was finished early and then I could, you know, I could walk over to the prairie. I didn't have to, to do anything extraordinary. And all I had to do was bring balls. And uh, hopefully there was, a, there was going to be lads there. And then, uh, you know, if there, were, if there was someone missing, uh, oftentimes Tom would take off Tom Leonard would take off and he'd go around the streets until he found them and, and bring them down, you know. But but the, uh, yeah, they were they were good times, all right. You know. And it's one of the things that that uh, I, I'm very conscious of uh, that that no one ever said to me, you, "You're doing this wrong. You could do this better if you did it this way or that way." And so that uh, I. Like that was what I would do now if I was with players, and when I'm with, when I was with the under 21s, or when I was with minors, that's what I do. I talk to one fella individually and just say, maybe you know this, you need to work a little bit on that to make the improvement or whatever you're doing something, uh, maybe against the grain. So, uh, like, but that that was that was reality. No, you just played. That was it. No, no question of hold it this way or hold it that way or catch it this way, nothing other like that. said the most important thing is his love. If he loves the game, he'll develop, he'll play.